Ave Maria Prisma, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Today the prayer of the people is, attend to our supplications, Almighty God, and graciously grant to us the effect of thy wanted mercy, to whom thou grants confidence to, the ho to hope in thy goodness. So that's the prayer over the people at the end. Today, it's also the feast of St. Margaret of Cortona. She's an incorrupt saint, died in 1297 at the age of 50. And she's a marvel, a penance. When she's seven years old, she was born to a, a poor farmer in Tuscany. And when she's seven years old, her mom died. And then a few years later, her dad remarried. And it was one of those stepmothers that doesn't want the other kids around kind of a situation. So she was not loved. She had a very challenging childhood. And then one day, she's beautiful, uh, in her late teens, I think 18 years old, here comes a knight riding by and, and, and uh, sees her. And, you know, and, and chatting with her, as guys can do, tells that she's insecure, whatever, wounded from that. And so he says, well, what? he asks her to, to live with him. He pro keeps promising her to marry him, but he didn't mean it. And so she shacked up with him publicly for nine years. And this is in the 1200s, the 13th century, the most Catholic of all centuries. So a public sinner, and she'd ride around on some high-powered horse with all her fancy jewels and all that, and she's a concubine. She had a son by him, and nine years into the relationship, he went off to check some other of his properties or whatever, and she didn't see him for a while, and his dog showed up and kept tugging on her and tugging on her. So she followed the dog, and, and she gets out there in the woods, and here he is, laying murdered, mangled up, murdered, you know, covered up with brush and, and, and leaves in a hole. Well, that caused her to enter into herself and realize what kind of life she'd been leading and what she was really all about at that point in time. So she, took, she gave everything she had back to his family and took her son, her young son, and, 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 and took off. And she ended up in Cortona, and she'd been a public sinner, so she did public penance. She, she went around and apologized for the bad example that she had done. You can think of what kind of humility that would take. And she's li made, made a living then by nursing a women in the town, and ultimately, her son entered the Franciscans. Ultimately, uh, she ends up just living on alms. And uh, after three years, the Franciscans that had been directing her saw that she was really serious, she'd made a true conversion, and so they allowed her to become a, a member of the Third Order. So that's, she's, so she's one of the marvels of, the, of St. Francis in that sense. Well, what other kind of thing? Her holiness got so great, it was only because her confession went letter. She wanted to mutilate her features because she was still gorgeous. Uh, but she wanted to you know, do that. Nope, they wouldn't let her do that to herself. But she'd sleep on the ground with just a stone or, 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 a, or a piece of wood for a pillow. And she grew, grew to such heights of holiness by her penance repentance and prayer and love of the Lord, that she'd read souls, people would come to her, she raised a child from the dead, she'd drive away devils and all that, but she never quit serving the poor. She got a hospital together and, and got other members of the third order to take care of it so they could take care of the poor. So she spent her life pouring out her, her love for our Lord in deeds of charity, and she died at the age of 50. She knew she had a a premonition, she was told when she was going to die, even the date she was going to die, and died. She's incorrupt, even right now, in, in, the, in the cathedral in Cortona. But a saint like that, it's not, the miracles are a sign of the love of God, but it's not the miracles, it's the charity. It's the penitence and charity. She entered into herself and then had, got that relationship with the Lord. So it, doesn't, it reminds us, it doesn't matter where you've been. It matters where you're going. Our Lord came for sinners. And here we have an example of a Mary Magdalene, a spectacular public sinner, and a scandal that in those years is gigantic, and that she's one of the great saints in heaven. Everyone here can join her. It doesn't matter what you've done. It matters what you become. And he's the way.